All right, and we are live with the 34th episode of the Game Session Podcast. My name is Jose. I'm your host, as always. Jose slash Seth Rokage. It really doesn't matter. I People use both. It's confusing at times. Seth is generally a very white name, not a very Mexican name. So it slightly catches me off guard hearing it. But uh, either way, uh, this week I'm joined by Atma. That, that for audio listeners, that was a very beautiful hand wave. <laughs> <laughs> I and, realized. Uh, oops. The curse of Sarah has spread. Hello. I mean, oh. curse. I was like sick for a week. That yeah. Like, that, not that's with fair. anything contagious. So I mean, kind of, sort of. I'm still kind of coughing. Hi. <laughs> But uh, just going to do the rigmarole at the top of the show. Uh, Game Session Podcast is filmed here live, typically on Mondays now at 5 p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. Uh, I want to give a shout out to patrons. That'd be Ramen, Bo, Fourth Big Boss, and Sly. Thank you very much to all of you. Um, first segment on the show is going to be a very important discussion that we won't necessarily be going into all the details um we will be linking resources to just things that we've collected over the last uh week or so um it's important to have that information out there so uh content warning if you don't want to hear about really shitty harassment um suicide uh discrimination it's uh it's not going to be a fun discussion for the first 10, 20, however long it goes on. It's it's not going to be a very fun, happy, upbeat start, but um, uh, Sarah, did, did you want to maybe go in and take it? Oh, uh, well, one, I was not prepared for this. Give me one s- second. Uh, audio, I'm sorry. I was not... Uh, I it, it's it's fine. I, I can open it up it. a bit. I can do it a bit. I mean, um, I'll talk, I'll talk <laughs> after. I'll talk yeah, candidly after. I'm sorry, um, no. So so to just describe it in in generalities, um, Activision Blizzard is facing, I believe it's a a class action lawsuit uh, from the state of California about years and years worth of heavily substantiated uh, discrimination against women. I guess there's also stuff coming out about men, but primarily women, people of color, uh, how shitty and toxic that work environment is primarily from people in positions of leadership just in the entire culture it's like a fucking frat house it's it's fucking disgusting i mean there's a stuff with riot like years and years ago that's that's still kind of going on even though they've they say they've uh, quote unquote settled it um it's 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 still there i promise you um it, it's it's even more so rampant at blizzard and and for a lot this is a wake up call that like yes it, it, it's good that Blizzard is showing its ass and that this is a class action lawsuit by the state of California. It is it is substantiated that there is going to be repercussions for this. But I think it's also a wake-up call that basically uh, this this kind of thing could be going on at, at, at any company in the game industry. Not, not even just the game industry, just, just in general. There's shitty stuff going on all around that uh, people, particularly women, people of color, are putting up with. Um, that they that they shouldn't have to. It's it's really fucking shitty, and people have died over this. Um, and no one should ever have to uh, be subjected to that. So, um, yeah, f- fuck every single person that's contributed to this. Whether it's the people explicitly doing it, whether it's the people uh, casually perpetuating it, going along, or even just people that that have seen shit go down or have been approached. Um, by others for help, and they've just kind of shrugged their shoulders and just let it go along. I, 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 I believe they're complicit as well. So, um, yeah, uh, Sarah, if you want to go ahead. Yeah. So, um, pl- so as people know, I myself am a very heavy WoW player. WoW came into my life at a time where I was in a pretty dark place. I'm thankfully out of that now, and I thank World of Warcraft and the people I've met through it as a big reason for that. Um, here at Games Procession, we we are under, and I hope everyone here can agree with this, I'm sure everyone does, I'm just saying this for like pos- posterity's sake. If you still choose to play 
any Blizzard game because the community, the world has given you comfort, has given you a place where you feel like you belong at, and you want to still play those games because of how they've, how they've changed your life, do it. No one here in this community is going to judge you for doing it. No one here is going to hate on you for doing it. No one here is going to basically be a dick to you for doing it. Um, Atma and I had this conversation before it started, and she brought up a really amazing point that I completely a- agree with. Something like, wow, I don't think it belongs to Blizzard anymore. It belongs to the people like me, like the community who has made it a home. And obviously here we say fuck fuck blizzard fuck every male who has who has worked at blizzard who was a part of this um if you are still playing we just only hope that you are doing it in support of those developers who were affected by this and those who are choosing to fight back about this and for those who protected their fellow coworkers as much as they could during all of this because it was just revealed today by a senior developer, de- developer, senior developer at WoW that all production has ceased. They're not working on anything. Activision Blizzard has forced them to stop working on anything that they're working on, and it was confirmed today that that also includes World of Warcraft. And they're not happy about that. Developers are not happy that they can't work on something that their fellow coworkers who are affected by this put so much effort into, and. Obviously, everyone here says fuck, fuck Blizzard, fuck Activision, fuck, fuck everyone who is involved with this. But also keep in mind the community that wants to keep doing this in support of those people who want to keep showing them that we care, that we want to support the hard work that they've done and that we've fallen in love with throughout the god 20 years that WoW has existed close to 20. Um, obviously, like I said, I'm still choosing to play WoW. I can't give up something that's given me comfort for five, six years. and Please note that I do it with all honesty, with fuck, fuck Blizzard, fuck everyone there who has contributed to this. But also I'm doing it in support of those who worked so hard on this, who were uh, affected by this. I don't want all their work to just be thrown out of the window. But also please note to support those who are choosing to not play WoW at this time. Or not play Overwatch or not play Diablo or Hearthstone or any other Blizzard title. Because they just, they just, they, their, their, their conscience doesn't let them do that. Just support the support everyone in this time affected by any amount of this, but also, and as the great old internet adage has said, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick to those who are still choosing to do that. Don't be a dick to Blizzard employees who have come out in 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 that one thousand signed document. Just don't. And I think it's just this is a lot. And here we have chosen to as. For the foreseeable future, I think, Jose, if that's how you want to say it, we will not be covering Activision Blizzard. Yep. We have chosen not to. We have discussed it. We All members of the podcast have discussed it, and we are not going to be covering their games in the future. That includes Activision. That includes Blizzard. So I don't know how to make this less depressing other than you are valid if you are choosing to play. You are valid if you are choosing not to. And I think that's what's really important. I, th- I think oh, yeah. it might have even been the three of us um, for, for one of the last shows we were talking about the entire Scott Cawthon thing um, with the whole uh, separate the art from the artist. It gets infinitely more complicated when it is a giant company and there's so many cans, like w- w- whether it's the director or whatever, whatever, whatnot, like every single person touching that, it is so much more complicated when it gets there. And I, I don't begrudge someone for... Um, engaging so I mean, wh- whether it maybe it has like shitty politics or maybe shitty people that worked on it or something like this it's um i think i think as long as you're acknowledging that there is shitty stuff going on you're absolutely fine i'm, I'm not going to uh i'm not going to begrudge anyone for that it's yeah uh no, Bob, did you have I anything think, you- yeah. oh, oh, sorry go. <laughs> uh, go 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 it's okay uh uh, I mean, I I just want to echo everything that both of you have said. Fuck Activision Blizzard employees that perpetuated this environment. Fuck every male that both did the awful things in this lawsuit and all the ones who stood by and didn't actually stand up for the people hurt. Uh, 
it's it was not right it's not cool i've um i have not been a fan of activision for a long time uh uh i regularly say fuck bobby kodak just because um i don't he's not a good person i don't like him for myriad of other reasons on top of all this nasty shit um but i as as a person i have gotten very into overwatch league um which is a, a way that it's, it's become a comfort for me i i met a community of people uh going to live a live game uh once a couple years ago like actually i went right before the pandemic started is one of the last things i did in public was go to an overwatch league uh live game and like those were those are good experiences and i have a lot of thoughts wrapped up in watching it because you know it's a big esports thing and it's primarily run by activision and and they're the ones putting it all together and you know i have i don't know what i'm going to be doing going forward if i'm going to watch the games anymore if i'm going to you know do anything regarding that but it's mm. important for anyone who does get comfort in these things to uh, to like like sarah said um it goes beyond the company like there's are there are communities made within this game and the people that are in the communities aren't the assholes and or most of them are not assholes there are probably still assholes somewhere but you know what you know, what i'm trying to say is the community where people build relationships friendships you know find their significant others like you can't just turn that off uh immediately and you know people have tied up a lot in this and there's a lot of emotional investment and it's not wrong to want to continue to be in that space because it means so much to you even if bad things have happened um but yeah so yeah it's i i think everyone just really needs to walk away from all this news and maybe don't have it on the forefront of your mind because it's 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 really depressing shit just keep your own mental health in, in mind but the harassment was so bad that a woman uh committed suicide this, this is how fucking shitty that environment is and then uh, so many of the discussions going on um throughout the week have been people jump from one shitty job to another shitty job in this industry it's just like it is just constant harassment everywhere and so i, I don't care how fucking minor it is like if someone tells a sexist joke or just i, I don't care if it's minor or whatever if you don't do your part to call that shit out you're part of the fucking problem and um th there was one video uh that, that's been circulating about it was it was a blizzcon panel from like 2010 a um a, a, a woman uh a question to ask I, I can't think of the fucking name right now she was asking a question at the panel and uh she, she had a very legitimate question just like so we have like really awesome care uh, female characters in um in World of Warcraft, and they have like great backstories, they have great personalities, whatever. But when can we stop dressing all of them as if they're Victoria's Secret models? And I, I forget the dude's name. He was a very high up person. I don't remember his exact shit. It, we're going to link to everything. But his entire response was just like, oh, well, we can dress them up as like other Victoria's Secret models. Just like this total fucking dude bro culture and just. The look on the woman's face as, as he was just completely shitting on her in public is that says a lot about what that culture at Blizzard has been for so many fucking years. And yeah, it, it, it's disgusting. There, there's no two ways around that. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have anything they want to say before we move on? It's just a lot. Yeah. And I think we just obviously this is a great example of uh don't put multi-million dollar companies on pedestals but also i think it's also another great example on the complete opposite end of the, of that of um 
wow, I had it. I lost it. Uh, just, just like the whole, the whole idea of we shouldn't shit on each other when it comes to what our comfort is and how we choose to consume that comfort and everything like that. Because with something as big as Blizzard and with something as big as WoW and as big as Over Overwatch and as big as Diablo, it's showing a lot of true colors of people who will either not shit on each other's comfort, but kind of that. And I think the big thing is just don't be a dick Yeah. throughout this whole thing. Because I think that's what's most... Other than fuck, fuck Blizzard and fuck all the men who were a part of this and who perpetuated this. I also think that we should, like, give... Not really shoutouts, but, like, point out the people in Blizzard who have come forward who have talked about how they witnessed this stuff and how they went to HR about this stuff and how men have witnessed this stuff and went to HR and made sure that their female employees uh, or their female coworkers were okay. Cause there has been a bunch of people who people have pointed out have done that as, as well. And I think it's just, while we should also obviously condemn the really terrible shit and the just uh, 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 obscene shit. I think we should also be like, people do exist in this industry who want to stop this and they are actively working at blizzard hoping to do something so yeah i just think that should also be yeah yeah like like fun as well like like activision blizzard isn't a monolith and like yes it's a shitty culture that they perpetuated and yes there were a lot of people in high up positions that didn't do anything about it and and made the sexist comments and all that stuff but like there are people in the industry and in activision blizzard themselves that were standing up for people and fighting against it even if the the higher ups were you know and hr and stuff might have washed stuff and so it, it's just you know it's it's a lot it's it's a bad situation but also there are different shades to it and you you have to take into account all the information and um just know that change in this sort of stuff is about bringing this stuff to light and doing your part and you know shitting shutting this shit down (laughs) when you see it happen and uh you know protecting people and standing up for people and yeah couldn't have said better myself. All right, with uh, that part out of the way, we can try to lighten the mood a bit, get to talking about what we usually talk about, um, minus the Kingdom Hearts stuff. Um, but the world ends with you comes out tomorrow. Yes, and we can talk tomorrow. about that. And we can talk about that next show <laughs> once I assume you'll probably have played it by the. See, I don't know. That's a that's a big gasp. I don't know if I'm gonna. You don't, don't know. know. I don't know. I played the I played the demo on a PlayStation Five, and it was it was it was fun. It was the more the world ends with you, which after the reviews have come out today, apparently isn't as a uh, new person welcoming as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's just like a remaster, isn't it? No, no. Is it a new game? It's a completely oh. new game. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Okay. And apparently, it is a flat-out sequel, and it's not one of those. Oh, new people can jump in if they want to sequel. Yeah, nah. New people are gonna get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, from what be because uh, like because like apparently this game's getting anywhere from like ten out of tens to like seven out of out of tens. It's like one of those games where either you like you fucking adore it, or people are just kind of met on it. But the major consensus is if you didn't play the first game, you're gonna be kind of fucked. <laughs> Isn't that first game still just trapped on the original DS? No, no, no. no they, Switch they, yeah, the they remaster it for Switch. So you are oh, okay. right. There is a remaster. It's not okay. a good port, though. Yeah, I played the not, Switch port. You should <laughs> play the DS good. version if you can. How, it, how is it a bad port? Is it because it doesn't have that dual screen yes. stuff that did it rely yeah. on that? It's yeah. also and the mobile version. They point. They port the mobile version onto Switch. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's because the mobile version had an extra uh, had an extra chapter to the end that leads into the sequel. Mm-hmm. It was one of those when it came out where okay. like it, it kind of hinted towards the sequel, but no one thought they were going to do it. 
Well, Nomura, who's the uh, production director on the sequel, he, he he's not actively working on the sequel, but he's a production director on it. He's confirmed that that and that like extra epilogue added on to the mobile and the Switch version. That's a flat out reference and leads into what the sequel is. So, yeah, if you didn't play the first game, apparently you're not going to have a great time. Amanda Mora knows how to make, make some real. Uh, I I was going to say I don't want to say convoluted, but convoluted works. But for this situation, I would say interesting. He knows how to make some interesting stuff, even though he's, if he's not like directly involved. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't don't quote me on his direct involvement. I just know that he was the character designer for this game or helped worked on the characters. And he was the production director, because let's be real, he's probably working on 7 Remake 2 or something. I don't know what Namor is doing nowadays. He has like five Kingdom Hearts projects, 7 Remake 2, probably a sequel to Bad Bad Children somewhere in there. I don't know. Namor is doing whatever the fuck he wants to do. And no one good, good, good for him. But I am kind of dis- disappointed that this isn't like a game you can jump into, because getting mm-hmm. the DS version is kind of hard to get now. It's kind of expensive. Uh, so, so, yeah. Like, I- or go ahead, Altma. I, I was just going to say it would be real helpful because, you know, it's been over a decade since the last game came out to have a game that, you know, draws people in so you, we can get more games. But if it's like even harder to get people into without the first <laughs> game, I don't know. So, so yeah. do we already know that if you if you haven't played that first one, you're just going to be totally lost yeah. in the second? Uh, a bunch of reviewers who, because the embargo dropped today, a bunch of reviewers have said that they're like, if you have not played the first game, there's going to be a lot that goes over your head. My guess is like returning characters probably. And like a bunch of like plot things that hinted in the first game. My guess is they just like, whoop, they just kind of were like, all right, we get to finally make a sequel to this. We're going to touch on all the shit that left on a cliffhanger in the first game, which was a lot. People forget. There was a lot that was left in the first game. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, thankfully, I uh I I didn't finish the first game. I got about halfway through it. So, I get I I'll I'll gladly report on how much stuff I don't understand once I start playing this. What yeah, I what mean, concessions did they make for that um for for the port of the or I guess the remaster or whatever? That it was fine like cuz like the game lives on its dual screen functionality. Like that was the whole point of the first game. Yeah, the way the combat worked really focused on the dual screen stuff. And like, yeah, yeah. And the fact the switch is only one screen <laughs> kind of like defeats the purpose of it. And like, it's a fine port. It looks pretty. It still sounds good. The soundtrack still fucking slaps. And it's like it's a good game. But when you take out the one thing that made that game interesting, which was its dual screen, it just becomes just a quirky JR- JRPG. What if, if Nintendo like put out an Disney from Kingdom Hearts? Like, what the fuck's Kingdom Hearts then? <laughs> what if Nintendo put out an adapter that you can put two switches Slap a second on top of each other? With, <laughs> just have like a freaking uh, USB C. <laughs> just plug them in together. And you have just just one big giant DS. Well, how the is, fuck are you gonna hold that? What do you have? Monster hands? It, it's gonna be like this, like grip or whatever. So you have no, a wait, switch actually, on the bottom. And then do you whatever. have Yowie hands? Can your yaoi hands hold that screen? <laughs> Please tell me that, that that's not what it, I think it sounds like. Uh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Is that what one hand on the game, one hand on the... No! <laughs> All right, very quick history lesson. Old yaoi novels and manga from the early 2000s drew their characters with crazy long proportions and they had giant hands. Don't ask me why! Oh, okay, okay, but laughing, I, she probably gets the joke. You're, you're talking yaoi, but you also said large proportions. <laughs> well, because their limbs were like hella lawn, and they had like lawn like legs, and it was very weird. It was it was a weird time. Okay, so we're just talking the legs, not nothing else. Yeah, no, 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 literally limbs, just like arms and legs and hands were like weirdly proportioned. Because I don't know. I guess people wanted really pretty yaoi boys. I don't. I don't know. But like the hands were very large. So you're so you're gonna need Yaoi boy hands to like use that. You know what they say about large hands. Yeah. Large gloves. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Mm -hmm. it's it just I mean I'm still probably gonna buy the world ends with you because I I I put demos that's cool, the game looks really pretty. 
Uh, but like, yeah, it really depresses me to hear that this game isn't very welcoming to people who've never played the original. Because I feel like this is the one way to get into this series, the easiest way, and to hear like, oh, good luck. It's like, well. Oh, also, apparently the Switch version's glitchy as hell. Yeah, that's what oh, I was really? going to say, is apparently there's a bunch of bugs and, like, crashes in the Switch version. Like, so enemies like jumping out of bounds, or... oh. so you can't kill them and you get soft-locked. Uh, crashes, yeah, I've, I've, like, I, I've, like, heard of crashing a lot on the Switch. It seems like the, the PS version is might be the way to go in terms of performance and everything. Is it a PS4 game or PS5? It's a PS4 game. I don't know. Yeah, if it's okay. I don't think it has it. any PS5. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it has any PS5 upgrades. I think it's just PS4 that you know is up. You can okay. play on the PS5. So basically, if you're not going to play that remaster, like, don't bother with the second one. Nope. Is this there's an anime that's supposed to come out the end of the year? That's a retelling of the first game. And Nomura has gone on record saying to watch that instead. <laughs> I, I was talking to um to blame like I, this this is tangentially related, where uh, she was trying to catch up uh, story wise back to where she left off on Danganronpa because she she had previously got into I believe the fourth case in that game, and she just kind of forgot it's been years since she's played it. So I, I believe she was asking if she should just like watch the anime up to that point. I'm just like, oh no no no, the the anime of Danganronpa is not good. Like, no, don't, don't, don't do, do that. that. <laughs> so uh, sh she just watched, uh, I believe, a couple let's plays just to kind of get caught back up. So I, I do hope that the uh, world ends with you's uh, anime is is fairly the good. The anime looks just like the game. Like the anime literally shares the same art style as the game does. It's okay. and also they flat out said it's a retelling of the first game. It just has characters from the epilogue that was added in in the anime, like seamlessly put into the story to help the epilogue make more sense. I don't know and why that, Crunchyroll that, has the rights to it. I think I don't know why that that reminds me. They they have a really there's a really good anime of uh, Persona Four. And then it is a very because, good anime. I can, because, I can also confirm. Because Golden, Persona 4 Golden came out on Vita <laughs> in like, what, 2011 or 12? And so they made another anime version, Persona 4 Golden, which I haven't watched, but from, from what I know, it's like an even more condensed version of that existing anime, but with some extra tidbits thrown in there for, um, uh, for Marie. Yeah, it's well. That's basically what the world ends with you. Anime is supposedly is it's just a retelling of the first game with the epilogue characters put in. And Nomura has gone on record saying that the anime leads directly into Neo, which is the sequel. So, but the anime is not out yet. <laughs> I, I know I haven't. I know I haven't played that first one. But honestly, one of my favorite things about the Persona Four anime is that it took plenty of liberties and just adding scenes that were absolutely not in that game. So I think for like maybe even just like returning fans that haven't played the first game, it could overall be more interesting for them. But I don't know. I mean, I know I'm still going to watch it and I'll buy the game eventually because uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll go tomorrow and buy it. I don't fucking know. But like it's I mean, it's the world ends with you if you like and maybe that monk could agree with me. If you like quirky JR, J, JRPGs uh, and you want very Nomura ass Nomura char characters, that's what the world ends with you is. It's got a super interesting combat system. If if Kingdom Hearts wasn't your jam, but Nomura still interested interest you as a developer, play the world ends with you. I have had, I've had multiple friends who are not into Kingdom Hearts, but like Nomura's like weird style of storytelling and characters, and played the world ends with you and fell in love. For what so it's like, worth, I'm I'm looking at eBay right now. Like if people really want the DS version, um, it's not that expensive. There's there's a couple for twenty five bucks for buy it now. Um, so yeah, if that's a better way to play it, it's it, it's it's not like crazy expensive. Yeah, I, th I think the remaster helped a little with that too. Yeah, the re the remaster helped it drop it price. But yes. yeah, the one on you tomorrow. That's gonna be cool. Great Ace Attorney. Slaps. <laughs> Great Ace Attorney comes out tomorrow too. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, this I, I, this week's fool. I forgot about that. I I really want to play that, but I still haven't beaten the uh, third game in the first uh, HD trilogy they put out. 
You should like do the, that. The third game's finale is amazing. You have to finish it. See, I, I love the first game, even that weird um, DS uh, bonus episode they did, which kind of messes up some of the storytelling in two and three, apparently. Um, two was rough for me. Two had some really obtuse uh, ways to, to solve puzzles and everything. I'm just like, that, that kind of killed my motivation to continue. No, but so I, like three is the good one. Like like three okay. is my favorite of the entire series. Uh, like like two is definitely not high in the list. Like one and three, I think, are the best. I really liked four, but it's also not uh, everyone's bag of tea, and I understand why. Um, so I. I'm really excited to to finally play Great Eight's Attorney because um, apparently it's supposed to be like really good and have some cases that are high up in in terms of quality and uh, everyone says it, it's they're some of the best in the the series as well. Um, I, I think it's a good time for detective games and uh, you know what? I don't think I told you or maybe I, I did. Um, so you and me, big Danganronpa fans, mm-hmm. uh, people have been recommending to me. Um, uh, zero escape for years and i finally grabbed them on the steam summer so i haven't touched them yet but uh very much anticipating diving into that it's a lot the of first murder, two games of are very good is the third one not very good the third one is a game it is a game it is a, definitely a game <laughs> okay okay I'll, I'll say this real quick blaine if you are listening I'm not going to explicitly spoil anything, but just maybe tune out for like 30 seconds. I, uh, okay. I had to explain the difference between V3 and 3, and that one is a game, (laughs) one is a movie, and that if you're going to watch 3, and if you're going to play Despair Girls, you're significantly better off playing that before V3. If you're going to touch them, because if you play V3, you're probably not going to want to after yeah yeah no i yeah wasn't one of the zero escape games playable on uh browser wasn't it 999 i I, I swear they released one of them on browser free there i don't know there there is a pc version of them i don't know if there was ever a browser version i think it might have been japanese only because i swear to god they had put like the first hour of 999 on browser like on the game's official website i mean it's mostly a visual novel it's mostly a visual novel with puzzles so like it it works (sighs) yeah performance is like two i swear they did it back when the collection came out they like did it as like a promotion to where you could play the first hour on on browser because I don't know why I'm remembering this. Like, this is, like, strictly coming to my head that I swear I tried it out. Like, I played, like, ten minutes of it, and I was like, ew. I have... Question for you. <sighs> or, oh. No, go ahead. Uh, oh, d- okay, so I, had, c- so I actually had some experience with the first game in the series in that my, I guess, ex-brother-in-law, like, he, like, he had the original game on DS... Why why is it not called uh zero escape? Why is it called nine people nine I, I forget the title. It, it's it's just three it's nines. A, it's a w- weird name. So I so nine 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 was originally um I think it was originally a standalone. And I think Zero Escape became like a subtitle for it once it became like a series. Okay. Um because like I think the second game if I remember correctly, the second game was just called Virtue's Last Reward for a little while, and then they added the Zero Escape uh, title to it as to, like, get everything, condense everything together. I, 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 I'm not super familiar with why I, I know, I used to know, and now mm-hmm. I'm, uh, it's been a while since I've talked about it. Yeah, because because at least the way they're bundled on Steam, I guess the first two games are under uh, the Nonary games, and then the third one's just Zero Time Dilemma. Oh, oh well. Yeah. But, but, let's. Uh, I thought let's talk they about- all went together really quick. Like I thought it was like a trilogy of games. It it, it is a trilogy, but mm-hmm. I think the the first the first game 
the first the first it, it's a trilogy in the sense of like say like pirates of the caribbean where like the first game is very its own thing and could just be a single game mm-hmm. but then the second and third games are make it a trilogy sort of okay. you know and, and i the 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 character zero who is behind the the games is like the through thread through all the games and that's why it ended up being the zero escape series okay okay yeah. is zero as interesting as monokuma no oh damn Mon- monokuma is still reigning champion but <laughs> yeah uh, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, EA Play that happened, and uh, this will give cha- this will give uh, Sarah a chance to uh, to geek out. Um, so let's see. Uh, it's all good. So I'm just going to go over the stuff they announced and whatnot. Um, Codemaster is a long-standing developer with a particular prestige in racing games, such as the recent F1 2021, announced its new project Grid Legends, which is set to feature a live-action story mode, which. I guess that's a new thing for racing games. Uh, hold on. It's live action mixed with special effects because they're using the same things that the Mandalorian did. So it's real people, but it's like green screen backgrounds. Oh, so okay. like the backgrounds are completely CGI. And this is what won the Mandalorian like multiple special effects awards was like this exact thing. Okay. Like, because like if you if you go back and watch that trailer, the background looks really funky. And you're like, something's off, but those are real life people. It's because it's using the same uh, program that Disney used. Okay. To do the Star Wars show. I will probably so. not play it because if it's not Crash Team Racing or Mario Kart, then I, I just don't mess with racing games. So that, that's just me. <laughs> it, it, it also feels weird because uh, when I got my Series X, um, I was asking people, like, oh, what are some of the best games to try this out to like see what it can really do? And like, Forza. aside from Gears Forza. 5. <laughs> <laughs> yep. People said Forza. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I, I don't care about Forza. My bad. Oh my God, oh my <laughs> yeah. Now it's but did you see really really fast? A uh, coalition posted some videos on Xbox's YouTube channel about working with Unreal Engine Five. I did. And like, Gear Six, Gear Six, Gear Six, Gear Six. <laughs> like I'm just like, come on. I'm like, I didn't buy this five hundred dollar box for nothing. I bought it for one thing, and that's whatever fuck your six is gonna be. That that that's where I'm sitting. I I haven't touched it too much. I, I kind of feel bad about it. I Sorry, I had to I had to bring that up because that just broke today. Like they just posted those videos like today, nice. and they specifically said it was the coalition that did them. So I was just like, any uh any thoughts on racing game uh Grid Legends Atma Cargo Vroom Vroom. Cargo yeah, room. That's I, I, cargo I, room. I, I, my, my, uh, my racing game, uh, experience mm-hmm. died when Burnout and Midnight Club mm-hmm. stopped being a thing because those were the games I played. And right, more yeah. on like the arcadey side. Yeah. When I got my first Xbox 360, I got dirt. <laughs> no, really? not dirt. Fuse. Was it called Fuse? Whatever the no, game was. Fu- to have Fuse to was the Insomniac player. game. So yeah. it's not Fuse. There was like there was one that was like dirt bike people. It was by Disney Interactive when that existed. Motorstorm? No. It might it, it was, might be dirt. Dirt is definitely one of them. No, it wasn't dirt. It was something else. Oh it started no. with that. Blur. Oh, it no. Fuel. 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 That's it. Fuel. Yeah. It was the weird Disney interactive game because at the time I couldn't have a rated M games. Almost all the games on the Xbox 360 were rated M. My first two Xbox 360 games were Soul Calibur 4 and Cricket Fuel. How, how I, have they legit not made like a straight up good, like Fast and Furious game at this point? I don't know. There's so much I fucking material care. to work with. <laughs> what? I don't care. There, there's I don't care so much to work kids. with. I don't care. I uh, as soon as I found out what happened in the new one, because I had Mandarin Chief tell me, I just don't, don't care anymore. You don't do that to family, sir. So. I don't do. I don't care anymore. That 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 <laughs> meme can go die in the hole where it belongs. It that meme's been alive for when did the first movie come out? Two thousand one. It's like twenty years. I hate that meme. Burn it to the ground. <laughs> light light the flame uh. and burn it to the ground. 
Sarah, I'm sorry, but you can't kill family. That's fine. Family is eternal. Um, he also let's... said that you couldn't kill <laughs> kill the uh, Terminator, and there's like four movies about them doing just that. <laughs> but so yeah, exactly, keeps definitely... coming back. Family will keep coming. He has back. a family now. It's fine. <laughs> Weirdly, oh, God, don't don't remind me. <laughs> you forgot that that happened, did didn't you? No, I, I try. I try to forget. Yeah. I hope they yeah. call the last movie Fast Family. Just Fast embrace family. it. <laughs> Atma, did, did you know that Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator has kids in the new movie? I think I heard that and then immediately blocked it out as like a traumatic <laughs> I saw that. Okay, okay, to, to, to be, to be fair, they're, they're not biologically they're related because you know he's, he's a Terminator. Well, they are his kids, but they aren't like biological kids. They were like kids through marriage. Yes, the Terminator yeah. married someone. Put that through your head. I mean, we weird kinks i guess someone who's into killer death robots okay. I mean, that's fine. Okay, he turns from the terminator to the suburbanator that's no he lives out in the woods but you're close <laughs> okay I, I this is a perfect opportunity i know we're getting sidetracked and that's fine because i need to talk about this and you know spoilers for what was it called dark fate right the yeah dark. yeah i think that's what it was one? okay I think yeah it was okay so so dark fate is supposed to be like a follow-up to judgment day the second movie and Salvation never I, happened. I, I, I kind of love, I, I kind of love that they just so casually gun down CGI version of teenage John Connor. Just like it's yeah, fucking nothing. Yeah, they do, nothing. baby. First five minutes. <laughs> I, I okay, like so I have this weird thing with canon in my head where I'm just like, I don't know if I if, if there's a, like a sequel down the line I don't care for, like whatever. I still have those original movies. I don't really care what happens after. But now every time I watch Terminator 2, I'm just like, oh, here's this perfect fucking movie. Just in the back of my head and be like, oh, yeah. Then they go to like fucking Costa Rica or some shit. And he gets fucking gunned down in the back. They literally it's, gunned down a child. If I they, feel like it's God gunned down a child. I feel like that's better than what they did with John Connor in Genesis. Like, oh, that's so much better. You know what? That movie was dumb in like a really good way. I feel like it embraced the stupid. Well, so, so like, or better I, than what they did in Salvation, where he's just kind of there. Yeah, <laughs> but like, I really liked. Um, I guess spoilers for the Terminator series, but mm -hmm. like, I really liked that they ha when they had Matt Smith as Skynet, and I was really looking forward to him being like an evil villain, like if they continued that, but the way they turned John Connor into like the villain in Genesis was just like, you're, you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. And like, I think putting the kid out of his misery was the, the only good decision that dark fate made was because they clearly don't know what to do with like T three show. They didn't know what to do with John Connor, uh, salvation Genesis. Every, every time they try to, okay. Know, uh, Plus, I'm, they gave I'm, us a kick-ass female Terminator. Like that was like yes. the coolest part of Dark Fate. <laughs> it's like the best, badass part of that movie. Okay, like it so killed. Like I, I put together just a quick list. I'm not counting the TV show. I never got in the TV yeah. show. So okay. So if I'm correct, there's one, two, three, Salvation, Genesis, and Dark Fate. Right? There's just the six movies. Yeah. Yes. Not missing. Okay. Okay. Best to worst. Said, what the fuck? Um, two and one are tied for me. Two is a action movie. One is a horror thriller. Oh, I saw this in theaters. Did I see this in theaters? So I think equally good, but they're just two completely yeah. different genres, and they're both perfect for that. Um, I mean, this kind of like scraping the bottom of the barrel already because one and two are like basically the only ones I can go like two thumbs up. Uh, yeah. Dark Fate has some good action. It has uh, I forget who plays Sarah Connor. I forget the actress's Dark name. Fate. I did see Jonathan. Uh Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton, there you go. I, I loved having her back. Uh so Dark Fates. After that is Genesis, because it embraces the dumb. Doesn't it have it has like Terminator? It. He 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 like nose dives through a helicopter or something? Or yes. yeah. You just made me remember Genesis is in a matter of two seconds and I nearly had like an aneurysm. Cause I'm like, what the what Genesis is about? I don't remember this. And then I'm on the wiki and it's like Ted Courtney said it. I'm like, and it all just came back to me. Like I'm just like gripping my seat. Like I'm like, came back to me in like a second. Like yeah, I'm that, like, that, oh god. That was Amelia Clark as Linda Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. Like nice. 
Um, also, Jai Courtney. I, I was upset because <laughs> they they did like the bait and switch and made John Connor the bad guy. But um, God, I can't remember his name. But the guy who played Storm Shadow in the GI Joe movies was the Terminator in like the first like act, and then they killed him off, and then it became John Connor was the bad guy. And I was so upset. Like, you know, I like sweet. Right, John Terminator. Connor was a Terminator. I, wow, this movie's coming back to me in like a matter of I, seconds. I, I distinctly remember base. I, I remember basically everything of two and one. Dark Fate's still fresh in my mind. I remember Salvation pretty well. I remember three. Genesis is kind of a blur, but I remember having a decent enough time. Um, Lee uh, Byung Hun. That I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but that's who who was he was the the Terminator. In, okay. in the first like section and like he's like a really good like martial artist kind of actor guy and i was looking forward to see what they did with him as the terminator and then they yeah. anyway, welcome to the uh terminator cast where i will now argue that <laughs> Sal- salvation's way better than you re- remember it being speaking of which on the next part of my list uh <laughs> salvation <laughs> um i don't know maybe i just like the I just like that Dark Fate and Genesis kind of know they're dumb. Maybe Dark Fate, to a less extent, takes itself more seriously. That's what makes Salvation but, so good is it's so dumb it takes itself so incredibly seriously. I, you know what? I, I think I need. I think I need to rewatch Salvation because I remember it definitely taking itself oh, more it seriously. It's so incredibly like like like, it's like, just- like it's a big old desert. Like it, it does a lot of cool world building. Like this is a state of the world, but from what I recall, maybe a little bit lacking. The personality department, but you know what? It has one of the best moments in any of the Terminator movies mm. where uh, they're in a facility. They're trying to br- actually has two of the best moments in all the Terminator movies. One, they're breaking into the facility at the end or whatever. And just out of nowhere, naked CGI Arnold pops out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. <that. laughs> I'm so sick. I remember that. <laughs> It was so good. I'm like, oh, oh, they actually fit Arnold in. Cool, and he's naked. Yeah, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger's junk. Oh, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger's junk. <laughs> and um, the second part is, uh, it's just a reality of what has to happen based off what happens in Terminator One when they get to the end of the movie and they're like, we have to send Kyle Reese back to the past, and and it it it, it ultimately comes down to we need to send him into the past. Because we need him to bang John Connor's mom. <laughs> Without it, John Connor can't exist, so... And then, I'm on the back. Like, Come on, kid, you know what you gotta do. Did it, like, Sam Worthington, he was, like, a secret Terminator or something, or they turned him into a Terminator to, like, keep I, him alive? I thought I that was... Correctly? Wasn't that, um... Why, why can't I think of the name? Guy that plays Bane. Guy that plays, uh... No! Vin- no, I remember Is that not, now, is that not Tom Hardy? No, once again, this shit's coming coming back to me. Sam Worthington was a Terminator, and he was meant to go and kill whoever Christian Bale was. I forget who Christian Bale was. Christian Bale was in there, too. This is back when he, like, screamed at people. Uh, Christian Bale was in there, too. And Sam Worthington was sent to kill Christian Bale, but he ended up saving Christian Bale. Yeah. Yeah, Christian Bale was John Connor. Yes! Yes, thank you! Oh, oh th- my it, god, it's why also do you have the- all this hidden Terminator knowledge? Like, where is this it, all it, coming from? It's also the movie where frickin' Christian Bale had that big ol' freak out on... Yeah, uh, we're yeah. Dude, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Uh, where is all this Terminator knowledge coming from? Oh, and then obviously 3 is the worst. It's, it's just... It's 3. Come with me if you want to. No, that's that's Predator. What am I doing? No, no, that that's one. That's, no, that's, I think that's all the Terminators. Yeah, yeah that, no, that's like one of the main oh, things. Yeah, you that say. is. First that it's is. Kyle, then it's Arnold, and then no, Arnold. Predator is get to the chopper. Thank you. Wow, I'm just <laughs> damn. Is this is, is this what happens when you haven't been in film school in like five years? Everything just comes rushing back to you. I don't think I ever studied Terminator at school. I mean, I think I watched it in one of my classes because all my teachers well, then, were giant nerds. So you're fucking lucky. I had to have shown it at some point. <laughs> anyway, can we, we were talk, talking can about, we talk about uh, Dead Space yeah. now? No, we got to go down the list. Damn Dead it. Space is last. <laughs> Best for no! last. I don't care um, about anything else. Uh, lost in Random is uh, actually looks really cool. It's a beautiful gothic looking uh, action adventure game. It looks basically like it pops straight out of Tim Burton's mind. Um, it basically has me just on that aesthetic. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm done. 
try it whenever it comes out. EA plays part of uh, Game Pass now, so uh, zero entry if you're already an active subscriber, I'm assuming. Uh, Knockout City, the uh, surprise smash hit by Velen Studios, announced Season 2, which includes new maps, uh, I guess a new ball, I don't know what that means within the context of the game, whether it does like different abilities or whatever. Uh, there's new playlists and rewards. I'm honestly kind of surprised that game survived past launch because it looked kind of eh uh, from, from like all the preview coverage. But yeah, people are actually super crazy about um, Knockout City. So congrats to the devs for being able to pull it off. Yeah, I like I haven't played it myself, but like there was a lot of good press about it when it was released. Like I saw a lot of streamers really getting into it and uh seem to be having a lot of fun with it so i i still haven't played it i i was like always because like i think it was like a free trial for like the first seven days or something like anyone could get in and play it and i kept meaning to like try it out or something but just never got around to it so but Mm -hmm. good to see it's doing well let's see i'll just maybe just even a slight small little tangent I i think it's cool that there's a lot of big multiplayer games that are out there now that aren't necessarily rated M or like shooters because I don't know. I I have nephews and stuff. that want to play games. I'm just like, Oh yeah, maybe you shouldn't play call of duty. Maybe you shouldn't uh, even maybe Fortnite to extent it's on the cartoony side, but it's good to, Oh, someone's calling me. You should not be calling me when I'm doing my podcast. Friendo Uh, I need to put myself on. Do not disturb. Uh, shit. That's my bad. I guess. I'll, I'll flip my friend off tomorrow. I'll see Did someone work. say Calling, the arguably best song that's ever been in the world ends with you? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I will um, take no argument. Let's see. Apex Legends announced its new season with Emergence that's launching on August 3rd, along with a new character uh, named Seer. Um, looks cool. It's another character like kind of in the line of Bloodhound, which is the person I main, so I'm down for it. The only thing I know about Seer is that everyone is saying he's hot. Everyone's horny for Seer. Yeah. So I I haven't played it. I, I played Apex Legends when it launched and then haven't touched it since then. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Battlefield 2042 announced the new mode Battlefield Portal, which lets players bring in aspects in 1942, Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3 in custom games. So if you want like a small platoon of like future soldiers versus like an entire platoon of like World War II soldiers, then you can absolutely go for it. It's it's it's, it's some dumb fun. That uh, that really that really sounds like yeah, like you said, dumb fun, like a nice mode or however they're doing it where you get to mess around and not just like be straightforward, all serious sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. You, you can have some good dumb stuff of, of like. Or just even like like I heard someone describe it as like when you're uh, when you're on a playground being like who would win like ten future soldiers or like a thousand World War Two dudes with pistols yeah it's it like, it, ha- it has real five year olds playing with whatever toys they have on hand energy you know like the stormtrooper versus the ninja turtle or whatever is going on mm-hmm. and now we can get to the real Hold on. sorry I again I am still sick. Uh, what I wanted to say was whoever made that, like, joke on the whole Reddit meme where it's like, who who would win the fight? 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? <laughs> the one with the little, like, bomb, bomb, bomb to diffuser droids versus the giant tank? I would buy Battlefield just to play that on a regular basis. <laughs> like, honest to God, I would play that on a regular basis. <laughs> like, that looks so much dumb fun. And I mean, also, I'm not in the Battlefield, but I'm happy people get to play, like, the stuff they really like about Battlefield. Like, that's cool. But on you guys, I'm happy for you, but I also don't really care. So. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go to the fun part. So, we, we talked about it a bit. Um, we actually had some pretty good timing, because <laughs> I had that thing in the notes for, I think, I, I want to say, like, a week or two beforehand. <laughs> But uh, we did the show, and then, like, what, two, three days later, they, they formally announced that Dead Space, rem- uh, not remastered, uh, Dead Space Remake is going to be a real thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I feel like I've kind of sufficiently covered my thoughts on it. 
Um, but Sarah, if you want to go ahead, since you were on there, dead space, dead space. I am so dumbly excited for this. No, no other game has almost made me piss myself, save for the original Dead Space, because that game scared the shit out of me when I was a child. Wait, was it piss or shit? You got to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, like honest to God, I like I'm the stoic. I love horror now, but as a kid, I couldn't walk like three steps in Dead Space without busting out crying. Like that game, honest to God, scared the hell out of out of me. And I've been wanting another horror game to do that. Like Red Evil's gotten close with like seven and eight getting more back into the horror stuff, but like nothing can reenact what Dead Space One did. So like just the fact that they're like, okay, we're just gonna do that again. But we're also going to mix in lore aspects that was brought in with Dead Space 2 and 3 and with the animated film and with the comics and with the books. Like, I'm just like, I am here for it. Like, it, and plus, like, so the rumor that was going around before all this, before it was announced, was that the, the developers were heavily influenced by the Resident Evil 2 remake. So... Like, if that's the way that they're going with it, it's not just going to be a remake of Dead Space. There's going to be different stuff in it. Resident Evil 2 remake, while it was very close to the original, wasn't a full-on remake. It still had its differences. So, like, I'm I'm just, I'm, I, like, I had words, but they're gone, because I just obviously blew my nose so hard my brightens came out, but, like... To just help you on that point, like while Resident Evil 2 and 3 take a lot of cues from the original games, they do take liberties adding new portions and yeah. just kind of doing their own thing here and there. Like, like Resident Evil 2 Remake is fundamentally not the same game as Resident Evil 2. They are, no. it's, it's not a one to one at all. And they've even, like, because so when they announced it, IGN released an article where they interviewed the, the two guys who were like the heads on the project and they flat out said, oh, well, there was like lore stuff that was brought up in, in Dead Space 1 that was super confusing because it was hella open-ended lore. But then that was then covered in Dead Space 2 and even in 3. So they're like, okay, so we're just going to stream streamline that. No longer is it just open lore. There's references to the stuff that 2 mentions. Like there's references to stuff that 3 mentions. So like they're making it more not a streamlined experience like gameplay wise but like story wise they're making it a little bit easier to understand which kind of rules and then they're also working at it to where they're like we want to make not just the original game but what they they had the i guess they are, they were saying they had the original files of the first game and they used what modders have found like i think they brought up in the first section when you're running through the hallways from all the necromorphs and, and stuff originally they were going to have you run a different way because mm -hmm. like I, I i guess they found a hall that was fully modeled that was never used and they came to the conclusion oh you were supposed to run this way and not this way so something changed in 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 development so I, the I, developers I, working on this remake have been like oh well, what if you run that other way mm -hmm. type of type of thing and that sounds like, really cool to me <laughs> like honestly one of my favorite things about the resident evil 2 and 3 <laughs> remake and i i believe that specific example you cited like they said it was due to like some kind of technical limitation yeah, they wanted to do like a cooler high um hallway limitations. but uh one, one of my favorite things about the 2 remake is that it really fucks with your expectations if you've played that original game like when you first go through that hallway where the liquor is supposed to show up it just doesn't show up that yeah. first time and then you're just you're, you're just going down a different hallway like okay yeah everything's fine oh that look you're worried about now it's there it's uh I, if, there, if there's even just subtle divergences i'm totally fucking down for that to shake things up see that, that it's funny you bring that up because like the one thing i remember i i played resident evil 2 like a demo or like a very short period of it and the only thing i remembered from the original game was the liquor coming through the window and so i was just waiting for it in resident in the remake when i was playing it but i didn't know where it was so like when it actually happened I was still prepared for it. So it's it's mm -hmm. kind of funny that you bring bring that up as like a twist when I didn't even realize it. I was just like, oh, I misremembered where this came where this liquor was. Uh anyway, sorry. That's all good. Um they also <laughs> announced so that there's excited. not Yeah. They announced there's not gonna be any um microtransactions or anything like that. So if people are worried about that, then you're good to go, which 
I mean, it wasn't in the base game, so I don't see how they would really add it. Because I don't know, three has a lot of issues. I don't think Mike Jaden's actions were necessarily an issue with three so much as like the core design. But I mean, um, EA finds a way. If EA they wanted to add <laughs> microtransactions, they would they would find a way. Um, shoot, what was I going to say earlier? Forget. Oh, I know this is the unpopular opinion, and definitely other mutuals on Twitter and whatnot have have not agreed. Um, as someone who just who has been streaming this um, on Twitch and whatnot, and just kind of playing on off off uh, stream, whatever. Uh, Dead Space One. I would argue very desperately needs a remake, not just a remaster. So I'm very glad they're taking this approach. Um, I mean, it's on 360. It looks like a 360 game from like over 11 years ago. Um, the PC version's kind of fucked unless you fuck with it a little bit. But like, just just even the way it controls, the way the you can't really play too well with mouse. There's another fix, but even that doesn't really fix it. Like like from the ground up, you kind of have to fix some aspects of dead space in order to get it back up and running as to how we remember it. Um, and e- even so, if you want to do ray tracing, if you want to do a completely overworked uh, lighting system for shadows, you know, it's a horror game. Fucking lighting's really stupidly important for that. If you want to do that, you can't do that with just a remaster. You have to build that shit up from the ground up. Mm-hmm. And the, and the, the example I will always point to is, so there's shadow of the Colossus on PS2, right? There's the remaster they did for PS3. It's a higher resolution, whatever. They reworked some textures. The PS4 version of Shadow of the Colossus is from the ground is from the is a uh, from the ground up remake, and it's kind of like the same approach they did for Demon Souls, even though they're using that original data, or whatever, to mirror that original game. Um, the PS4 version of Shadow of the Colossus looks and plays so much freaking better. It's because they're able to do that from the ground up. So. Um, yeah, very glad they're not just doing like an up res, slap some new textures and call it a day because I, I think it needs a little bit more than that. If, excuse me, I'm going to down, download Dead Space really fast. On your <laughs> Xbox? Yes. Yes. Because That's... I want to replay this game because to be completely honest, I don't remember much of Dead Space 1. I remember more of Dead Space 2 because that game was my jam when I was a teen. Like I loved that game a lot. Uh, and I'm going to echo Blaine on this. Please make Isaac talk. Him talking in Dead Space 2 was like the best thing that they did. I don't want him to be silent anymore, to be completely honest, yeah. because he's actually a very interesting character. And I'm interested in this game, because if this game does good, they will most likely remake Dead Space 2. And Dead Space 2 dealt a lot with Isaac's obviously frail mental health after the events of Dead Space 1. And I don't really remember Dead Space 2 doing all that good, now that I look back on it. Uh, so that would be very interesting for them to tackle too. And one of the big parts of two was his like frailed psyche. So I think my, po- my poor dude went through a lot of shit in dead space. I think went through a lot. Leave him alone. <laughs> my poor dude. I think went through so much. Now I'm just remembering that. And I, and I, and I think I even tweeted this. Like my first thing I tweeted after the re- reveal was protect Isaac Clark 2k, whatever, whenever this game comes out. Because, yeah, poor dude, poor dude's gotten his ass kicked a lot. Poor dude was literally just an engineer. Like, he, he, for all we know. Like Leon was, or Claire had military training because of Chris. I think was just an engineer. You know what? I would legitimately love for there to be, like, even a prologue to getting on the ship to go into the Ishimura. Where you see Isaac, he has, like, a big bubbly personality, like, fucking uh, Ichiban from, like, a dragon. He's supposed to be, like, the super upbeat dude. And then he starts going through this shit, and you see his, like, entire personality fucking deteriorate. I I, I would love that. I know it's not going to happen, but... Well, like, the one thing that really interests me was that the article that IGN put out, the the developer said that this is going to be a one-screen game. There's going to be no loading screens. Uh, Even when you boot up the main menu, it goes straight into the game. Like, there was loading screens, there is... I think it, it sounds like, to me, the God of War approach, what God of War did. The fact that no cuts and no, like... It's just one continual camera. Now that I think about it, I I do believe the overwhelming majority of even those original games, they they are they don't have any cuts. The only exception would probably be Dead Space One when you're going in between levels. 
But aside from that, everything else is yeah. Is, see, uh, no, seamless. apparently this game's not even going to have that. That'd be like cool. it's going to it's it is going to be a straight. They said you could play it in one sitting and see no loading screens. So nice. that's what kind of is nuts to me. That that plus, sounds like uh, it'll be good for a horror game. Yeah. Plus, we're we're not even discussing. This is not coming out on PS4 and Xbox. One. I'm kind of glad to be honest. I, I wanted to take like full freaking advantage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I think I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more uh just PS5 and Series X games uh coming up. What like once we get through like the, the pandemic backlog of games that are supposed to come out that are like cross generation, I think we're gonna see a lot more just mm. uh new games. We're kind, of, we're kind of crossing that threshold anyway. I, I know Microsoft, they still kind of said um, they're, they're, they're still going to be supporting Xbox mm-hmm. One um, for a while, at least at least, in ter- at least in terms of their exclusives. Although, although now I think about it, they also still have to continue support for the, uh, for the Series S, which might actually hold some stuff back. I know they've, they've made like a ton of concessions for even some... Uh, even some recent games where like it is 30 frames or they're missing like ray tracing and stuff, but I don't know. Like ultimately that leads to the, the base <laughs> or not the base, but the higher tier uh, series X, the PS five, whatever that, that results in games that perform better uh, in terms of like frame rate, whatever, then I'm down for it. I think we're also missing. Cause I just thought of this now. How the fuck haptic feed- feedback's going to be on this? Which excites the hell out of me. Oh, you know what? I was talking about this on stream the other day. That's it's semi-related. If I don't buy collector's editions, I buy all my games digital. If they do another collector's edition where you can get the plasma cutter physical, that was, I would... That was, that was the Dead Space 2 one, because I, I own that! Yeah, and I missed out, so... I got that! Like, that was oh. the first collector's edition I saved up for as a kid, and I got it. But, like, imagine the I, haptic feed- feedback on this. Yeah, I wish I got that. And also, yes to the haptic feedback. Like, all the different engineering weapons that he had, like the line cutter and the plasma cutter. Oh, that's going to be good. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's what also... Also, the, the like, the uh, haptic vi- vi- vibrations as as well, like... Like, being on a spaceship and, like, feeling like the rumbles or, like, stuff yeah. happening. Oh, yeah, that's that's the stuff. I'm just, I'm like I'm just really excited to be scared again because I feel like not many horror games have like legitimately freaked me out. I mean, there were some times in Resident Evil Eight where I got pretty uh, spooked, but n- nothing has ever scared me. Like the only two games in recent memory I can think of that actually scared the shit out of me was Dead Space One and Alien Isolation. Yeah. So I, like I, the fact that it's been so long, I'm just like, please. Yeah, I, I went over this I think last week, but like. I mentioned that like horror in space is the only kind of horror that I really get into. Like, like I'm, I, I was, I'm not a huge, you know, horror fan in the other senses of like, you know, zombies and things like that. But like dead space is my jam and I am really looking forward to seeing what they do with it. I, uh, I hope I want it to, I like, uh, I think Blaine went into this a little bit, um last week as well but i hope it's leans more into like a final fantasy 7 style remake and not like a one for one remake based on you know like how the original trilogy ended Mm -hmm. and hopefully like they can do some cool like horror related shit and like psychological stuff and um switch it up a little bit because that would be really cool but yeah, you know. Before we move on, I just out of curiosity, I looked up the plasma cutter that came with Dead Space Two. That that is I like mini. That I I want yeah, like a. Yeah. I, I, it was like super small. I I want a life size model, like you know, like you can strip hold the damn thing, and yeah. I uh, well, I'd pay that? good money for that. Uh, I don't know if anyone caught it from the trailer because it was super soft. And I actually had to rewatch the trailer a couple of times. They use that fucking spooky version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star again yep. in the remake trailer. And I didn't even realize that until I heard it again. I was like, oh, no. 
<laughs> like that just all of dead space one and i don't know if it was just how dead space one was like set up i mean i'll find out when i play it again but that game was spooky dude like they mm-hmm. they did a good job in making that game terrifying like back um, then, you know it was the early three to 60 days like they managed to make a game that was fucking terrifying and yeah you can you can argue dead space is all jump scares but like it, it does them well. It, it never really comes off yeah. as cheap. Like th- there's a, there was one part when I was streaming where you come in a room and a dude's like he's uh he's choking on his own vomit. So you know you turn the camera looking like oh shit is this guy gonna be okay? And so you're you're distracted. You're looking at this dude and a, and a fucking necromorph pops out like right behind you in a vent that was behind you. Like it, it's going out of its way to distract you. Just to uh, just to fuck I with you. I feel like it does the Bioshock effect of horror, where Bioshock was that same exact thing. It always wanted you to look at something else, and then a splicer would come out of nowhere and like bite your fucking ear off, and then would scare the shit out of out of out of you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like horror in gaming hasn't been in that like sphere of it, kind of like the Bioshock Dead Space uh, fear era in a while and i kind of miss that like i kind of miss the whole like cheesy early 360 horror era and like i'm not talking like fear 2 or like whatever the fuck fear 3 was i'm talking about like the first fear like one of the first like shooters to mix like actual like japanese horror elements to it like i'm i miss that era i miss that i mean honestly if people want to say like a cheap uh like jump scare game i I would honestly say like yeah fear one fear two are pretty guilty of that because Alma never really even does anything. She's just there to, like, scare the shit out of you. Yeah, but, like, fear... The way that fear... The first fear did it, I think, it was in the same vein as, like, Bioshock in the first Dead Space. Was fear always, like, yeah, Alma was, like, kind of cheap jump scares and stuff. But you never knew when she would jump out at you. Fear was super good at, like, making you think it was just a normal shooter. And then little scary... Japanese style girl coming mm. out of nowhere and scaring the piss out of you. I, I, like, I think it's just more so like even in Bioshock where the things that are supposed to be the horror elements are things you do have to combat. Whereas it's kind of, um, it's kind of like, se- uh, segregated where, uh, Alma is, is completely different from what you're doing for like 99% of that game. But, um, I, I guess it works in its own regard, but I don't know. I, I've been playing fear Two a little bit just on the side. And maybe just because I played it too many times. God, but Fear like, Two is weird. Oh yeah, Fear Two's got Fear Two's got a weird ass ending. I'm, I'm not gonna Fear say much. Fear Two is weird, but no, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just glad that EA didn't forget that Dead Space existed. Like, it's that that series to me was when you think of space horror, yeah, people think Alien, but people, I think uh, people also think Dead Space. So I think it's really cool that EA's like, don't worry, we didn't forget that Dead Space exists. Here's, here, we're I, actually remaking the first one. I, I guess I can't make the, before we move on, uh, just, I guess I can't make the joke anymore that uh, PS5 is the worst console because you can't play Dead Space on it. Um, <laughs> you, be granted, I can still make the same joke about Dead Space 2 for the time being. Um, they so, better remake Dead Space uh, 2. Or Rain and Power, PC, and uh, Xbox, I guess. I really want them to remake Dead Space 2, because I'm actually, again, I'm remembering Dead Space 2 and how fucking great that game was. Uh, Even though it was really just the rest to, uh, of work, kind of, when you think about it. So, so this one might seem like a little bit of nostalgia from a earlier thing we did in the year. Uh, Nintendo has announced that the company will be removing credit card support for both the 3DS and Wii U starting in January of next year, effectively shuttering the closure of their digital storefronts. Uh, this type of news isn't new to the digital landscape, as Sony attempted the same strategy earlier this year uh, with the PSP, Vita, and PS3 electronic stores, and only rescinded their actions on the latter two platforms once enough public outcry was achieved. Sorry, my Phone's vibrating. Probably fucking with my mic on the recording. Um, I remain doubtful that Nintendo and its traditional stubbornness will rescind such a move, and it's a damn shame because uh, so many games are still locked to the 3DS and Wii U exclusives and whatnot. But even on top of that, the Wii U in particular has such it, it, it's such a good machine for accessing so many games all across um, 
Nintendo's history. Like you can play N64 games, you can play Game Boy games, you can play uh, original DS games. Like these are all available to download. It's convenient. You don't have to like go to fucking eBay. And uh, even more so than Sony, I would say Nintendo's entire brand is built on nostalgia. Like when you when you even when you go to like play like Mario Odyssey, like so much of the charm of that comes down to I have a giant amount of. Nintendo nostalgia, and this reminds me of playing uh, older Mario games. Like, that is their brand, so... Uh, this is... I mean, I mean honestly, uh, there's probably not a lot of people playing on their Wii U and whatever, but... Man, just in terms of, like, preservation, they are really shooting themselves in the foot. It's it's kind of disappointing. Yeah, I, I have, for a long time, been really upset with how Nintendo handles their... their uh history and previous games and like they like it it goes back to the fact that every fucking new system they have they have put together a new eShop and then they charge you 7 bucks for Super Mario Brothers again on this new eShop like the 3DS had its own shop the Wii and the Wii U and all of them and they bring back the game the same games and they charge you, you like you cannot you can never like forward them through your account or anything. It's mm-hmm. not like the Sony system or the the Microsoft system where like you could once you get it on one system, you can play it on whatever you want or at least yeah. it's in your account. And then they shut the things down. So like Metroid Fusion, I think, is on the Wii U shop or one of the Metroids. Oh, yeah. I believe I believe both of them are. Yeah, and, and I and like that's the one of the more most convenient ways to play it now, but they're shutting it down. So you got to wait until they deign it appropriate to, you know, put it on another shop before you can get, get it again. And it, it just re it's like the old Disney vault system and how shitty it was. And like, sort of like the forced scarcity, they did it with the, the re-release of the um, super Mario 3d all stars, uh for the the mario anniversary where like you know they stopped selling that on the eShop, like the and it they they just have nintendo in general has a horrible attitude and like i don't know it it they have so many good games and like the whole thing they did was they like they target children and families and they they build up their audience from like a young age and so people are going to have nostalgia for those games they played when they were younger but then nintendo you know turns around and charges out the wazoo and makes it hugely difficult to even find these games like like honestly i i wouldn't care if like they nintendo actually gave a shit to port their games to the switch uh because it's just be like okay cool it's on the newer hardware whatever but like, I, I was just thinking to myself the other day, just like, you know what? I kind of feel like going back to play um, Ocarina Time 3D. I want to play Majora's Mask 3D. That, those are just great ways to play those games. I would argue they're definitive. I mean, some people still prefer, like, the N64 versions. But, man, they have such a history, and they refuse to make it available. Like, are they just adverse to money? Like, like let's say even, like, once a week, release uh, a, a game from, like, each old system or whatever like they have the funds to do it it's so much of what nintendo does just does not make sense and just to touch on an earlier point you mentioned where you're constantly having to rebuy like super mario brothers where you're just unwilling to verify like yes you do own this therefore you have an unlocked token to download the switch version or whatever because this this is this this, is a there's a known quantity it's not some it's not fucking rocket science um when I, when I, even when I think about that, like I have the Steam Deck pre-ordered, and like one of the biggest appeals of that to me is like, hey, if I feel like playing, what, what's a random game in my Steam library? Let me let me shuffle this shit real quick. Let's see, Not installed. If I feel like playing Metro Last Light Redux, I don't have to worry about buying a new version because I already fucking own it. I ponied up the money freaking years ago. I'm good to go, and that's just something Nintendo's. Uh, unwilling to do and uh, and and like then they have the the switch they replaced the eShop with the switch online 
you know membership program where you get access to like nintendo and super nintendo games and then they release like three games every three months on it yeah and and like and i appreciate them like a lot of people sort of give them shit because they were for the last couple times they've done it they've released these like really like obscure games and like they're they're not releasing like the hits and that's cool for for game preservation they're re-releasing these lesser known super nintendo and nintendo games that might like you know trigger something nostalgia memory whatever and they're giving the spotlight to them but at the same time they aren't doing this frequently enough for that to be okay like if you're releasing three super nintendo games for your paid online membership thing every couple months they can't just be the deep cuts like you you have to also give the people what they want and there's just like obvious shit that's just missing like i I haven't looked at the switch online thing whatever in a while but they out of anyone on the market they have the (sighs) biggest pockets like they have the biggest library of games that they can put out there they they just don't if this tells you how much I care, I haven't renewed my online membership in like a year. Because <laughs> I just, I don't care about anything they've been putting out. I mean, I bought that Mario collection just so, you know, I could have it before they killed him. And I still have it. But like, I, to be completely honest with you, I'm probably going to sell that thing when it becomes like $200 in like a year. Yeah. Like, because it's like that, because Nintendo is the worst when it comes to making things to where you can buy things physically or you can get the collector's edition of anything. And this is coming from a former GameStop employee who was around when Super Smash Brothers came out and Nintendo went, oh, you guys have over 300 copies pre-ordered? Cool, we're going to send you 350 because you have 336. So people only get a chance to get 14 copies of it if they didn't pre-order it. Like, nin- like it's I don't know. I don't much. To, I don't have much to add to the conversation because I'm not that big of a Nintendo person. But like, yeah, I no, don't think I, they're as good as preservation as people think they are. Oh no, they're, they're probably the worst. Like because I, I think they're like like you said, Emma. They have deep pockets. They're not going to release Metroid Fusion for people who pay like five ninety nine a month. They're gonna make you 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 pay thirty fucking dollars for it. Like, yep. Lead down the line. Like, it's, there you go. Here's I mean, my thing. Because I bought this? Skyward Sword on the Switch, but I've never played Skyward Sword. That seemed okay to me as someone who has never played it. But like, for those who have played it, sixty dollars just seems fucking intense. There you go. Here, here is my 3DS with what is it said? Zelda hardcover casing, whatever. Ooh, Uh-oh. nice. That I looks beautiful. Uh, I don't... Is this, does this have power? Holy shit, how does this have power? Uh, I haven't used this I in like dust mine four off years. Too. Animal is Crossing it, Switch. Is it booting up? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give mine the power oh, test too. It, sa- it says full power. Like all mine's, bars. Mine's turning on too. Animal Crossing hell? Switch. I don't, I don't have a DS anymore. So here's my <laughs> Animal Crossing. See, what? Let me see. What do I have installed? Because I, I don't have like a big book. memory card or whatever. Persona um, Q2. My... That's what's been sitting in my 3DS. Nice. Here's my nice. I, I have the first one installed. Game. I never played the second. Uh, I have Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, Mega Man, Super Mario Brothers, Pokemon X, Ocarina mm-hmm. of Time. And Mario Brothers three. I, I have more stuff, but I have so I have the two Legend of Zelda Oracle games. Uh, I've got Mega Man five, the Game Boy version, which th- which had the Planet Robot Masters, and mm. I've got Shovel Knight. I do have and... Shovel Knight on PC and Switch. I don't oh. have a two DS anymore because three D hurt hurt my eyes. Oh, I never use it to be honest. So yeah, I never used my, the three D on the three DS. It's just either. my Animal Crossing Switch. A like, system update like is available. Thing. I also have toe beans on it because toe beans make you play better. 
I still like, I, I know, I know it made a lot of people's head hurt and I never used it, but I still think the 3d technology they used for the 3ds was really cool. Like, like, like honestly, cool. they'll, they'll know <laughs> they ah, I can't speak. They, they will never do it again because they got sued for it. It, it. it was a patented thing and they went against it anyway. So unless they strike some kind of deal, it, it's just not going to happen, but the, which uh, sucks. That sucks. Which there was some cool stuff because like you, you could do it and like even stuff like Zelda it, like it was cool but there's like some games that are like specifically built around it that man that's some really cool shit in it. I oh, used to have the, the Persona Q 3ds, the Persona Q 3ds XL. I did, I did have that at one point, and I got rid of it because the 3D hurt my eyes and it was really heavy. Only to find out that that thing's worth six hundred dollars. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I, I had look. my, I had my uh, first ever bout of gamer rage that destroyed a system because so this is my second 3ds and it's like the the Super Smash Brothers XL like special edition whatever. Mm -hmm. I originally had the regular 3ds that was like the Fire Emblem Awakening special edition that came with uh that was it was like a. <clears throat> It came with it pre-installed or whatever. And I played Super Smash Brothers on the 3DS and got so frustrated playing online, I went, ah, and like oh angry and oh, wow. snapped it in half. And oh, I was like, Jesus. Uh-oh. I need to I need to control myself. <laughs> uh but yeah, so that was um that 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 was the last time I ever had gamer rage. Uh, I mean, if we're on that topic, I guess I will admit in public, please hope my dad doesn't watch this. I, uh, a couple years ago when I first started, uh, no, it was back when I was in junior college. I was playing Mortal Kombat 10 and was playing the story mode. And, uh, Quan, it was it, was it, was it Quan Chi who was the ending boss of that game? But he was like dumbly over, overpowered and I kept dying. And I had my laptop open next to me because I had like music going. And I got so angry that I punched my laptop and completely shouted the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and I had that awkward call home to my father where I'm like, hey, dad, my laptop screen broke. And he went, why? And I just got quiet. And I was like, I got mad at Mortal Kombat. And I punched my laptop. And he's like, you punched your laptop. And I'm like, it was the closest thing to me. I didn't want to break the PlayStation. <laughs> so I yeah. broke my laptop because Quan Chi and Mortal Kombat kept kicking my ass and i got very angry <laughs> I, and there was another time i broke my phone waiting in a certain game because i got so mad that i took my phone and slapped it across my desk and it <laughs> it hit the ground at the right angle and shattered the whole thing and i had to make that geek squad uh what is that? i had to make that geek squad appointment forgetting that my dad's account was tied to it so he got the email oh, no. and he forwards the email to me five minutes later and just says so so what happened and i lied <laughs> and i said i dropped my phone and my phone broke he not he does not know to this day that wow broke my phone <laughs> Still does nobody, not know. nobody clipped this no. damn it <laughs> But no, yeah, rage is a terrible thing, and I you just remind me how fragile 3ds's were. Mm -hmm. I I think I, I I'm still scarred from from the threat of my mom of just like, hey, if you break any of your controllers, not buying a new one. Maybe maybe I'd get like a Mad Cat's replacement. So I'm just like, okay, let, let's let's not fuck with that. Yeah. I th I think I've maybe like thrown a controller or two, but it's always been like on my bed or like a pillow. Yeah, but, I, I I've I've thrown a controller. One of that's one of the stories that my uh, friends like to <laughs> constantly remind me of. It's I was on a voice chat on the 360, and I was playing Vanquish while they were playing like Borderlands or Left 4 Dead or some <laughs> other co-op thing, and I got stuck at a boss in Vanquish, and. <laughs> It killed me enough times that they like basically what happened from my end was I just screamed and threw my controller across the room. They heard me scream and then it cut out because I was disconnected. Oh no! <laughs> oh wow! 
<laughs> so they so they thought you died. <laughs> yeah, they were like, what the fuck just happened? Like I just screamed out of nowhere and then just disconnected from the party. Oh wait, I can't say anything because I broke my first PlayStation 5 controller because it was kind of the same thing. Wait. <laughs> We have PlayStation 5 controller? Yes. This is recent. Yeah, it was pretty recent. I was trying I was on the last mission of Watch Dogs Legion and it forces you to drive for one of the quests, but it raises the like enemy robot AI on you because obviously it's the last mission of the game. And I kept getting caught and because I didn't have like player death on, it would just restart me from the beginning. And I went through that seven times and I got so angry at it because I love that game. But the driving is horrible. It's not fun. Wait, do they not oh. fix it after the first game? <clears throat> huh? Do they not fix the driving after the first game? Well, no, because the so like when you go too fast in a car and you try to make a fast turn, the car does this weird like back and forth thing. So and like that final that final chase is you have to get away. Well, when you're trying to go through really tight alleys, the car will start doing the weird thing and you'll get stuck. It happened to me. I was getting really pissed. And so I just like chucked my controller and the bottom of the controller popped open and I couldn't get it back closed. <laughs> and yeah. the vibrations were fucking up. So I had to go and buy another controller off Amazon. I still have the broken controller. Like it's sitting in my like in my like cabinet right next to me. But uh yeah. Wait. I, may, I have really bad rage, I'm sorry. May we view the battle damage? I I would have to find it, so just start talking about something else, I guess. I, I think per capita I have ruined the most 360 controllers. I think that was the peak of my rage. I think uh, I went through more 360 <laughs> controllers than any other uh to, system. to be fair, those break themselves. Those are like yeah. th those suffer from wear and tear like crazy. Like especially you, like the sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look at those funny, they break, so. <laughs> oh, where is it? I, I think I've broken maybe a mouse, just because, I, I like, so, like the grips on the side, they, they came off because I, I just grabbed the mouse too tightly or whatever the fuck. Yeah, but... that, that's happened to me for, for a couple of my mice. Mouses. Mice mouse? Stuart? Yeah. Uh, I, th I, so all, I had this really cool, uh, I had this really cool Gears of War 3 Xbox 360 controller back in the day. And it was like the coolest damn thing ever. But because my hyperhidrosis as a kid was so bad, I wrecked it. And I was home recently and I found it. And it was so coated in my sweat. It was disgusting. Yeah. Like, it it made me so sad. Because I... Oh, I found it! Sorry, hold on. Please hold <laughs> I have so much Here, stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll hold up a uh, a non-damaged one for comparison. Oh god, it's getting really weird. I don't know if you're able to like, like it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, that can... bottom black part, or yeah. Oh, that is. Well, there you go. That is uh, that. Uh, I kind of yeah. You, I can't. Well, you, if you also check right here, it's also like yeah. Uh, like here's a regular. Well, I guess you guys can't see on the, for that for your camera. Wait, wait. You know that that's yeah. I can I see how like with the, with the, with the haptic stuff, it's probably a lot worse with that if that stuff starts coming un unglued. If we wanted to do a video only thing, I could take this apart. <laughs> Have we ever discussed how we're going to do an unboxing of a PS5 controller? We're just like, going to take whatever. it apart. <laughs> Have we ever discussed just like with how the, the color scheme of the dual sense? It looks like the, the controller is white and it's just wearing like black overalls with like yeah. everything. It's I really I really want to custom design a Mario <gasps> PS5 controller and have like the, the blue overalls and a red uh, Oh wait, let you me do the same I the red controller. Gotcha. You can do the same idea, but make the body yellow and it can be oh. your minions controller. Oh god, no. No. So the red one I, mm. does this really cool thing where the where the buttons are actually outlined in almost like a light pink. Yeah, so like I, re I really much. like the are red those, controllers. Are those custom sticks, by the way? No. The, the what? Are, are they what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're like uh, they're like controllers. They were. I thought they were googly eyes for a second. 
<laughs> no, I argue that toe beans help me play siege better. So I have I have toe beans on this controller, and then I have my replacement controller that I bought when I broke the other one, and this has toe beans on it. I I can personally verify that uh, real toe beans do not help. If anything, they jump on top of you <laughs> and they they shove their oh, freaking face into your hand when you try to use the mouse. On accident. That, that's <laughs> something that on. It, it's the power of the toe beans. <laughs> <laughs> now my um, PlayStation's on. So yes, oh no, now you're gonna have to, have to play to Siege. Yeah, no! You're, you're legally required. <laughs> nah! I need to turn um, my PlayStation off. Give me a second. God damn it. Let's see. We, I think we got time for like one more. It's also another <laughs> Nintendo story. <laughs> um, maybe, le maybe less dumb moves, whatever. We'll, we'll see. Oh wait. My 3DS is done updating after like four oh, years. Oh. Uh, let's see. New story. Let me go ahead and mark this to what? what's the time code? 141. Uh, Nintendo has announced that it currently has zero plans for a new Switch model beyond the recently showcased OLED variants. Uh, leading up to the announcement of the OLED Switch, uh, fans were fervent in discovering more details about, alleged, about an alleged uh, Switch Pro that would yield 4K resolutions, with some still holding out, uh, holding out hope that this uh, version is still around the corner, despite the OLED coming out, I believe, like what October. Um, Nintendo's rush to announce uh, such development of a new console is unusual for the company, which is more than I'm sorry, which was more than likely done to stifle the discussion as to ensure the sales of the OLED Switch aren't impacted. Um, industry analyst uh, Matt Piscatella mm -hmm. has been on record as saying. Uh, Nintendo frequently does uh, refreshes a model. I'm sorry, they do uh, model refreshes of, of uh, current hardware just to keep a steady line in profit. So there's no real uh, dips or anything like that. They're like this is definitely par for the course for Nintendo. It's not some weird thing. Um, and additionally, Nintendo has outright denied a, an earlier Bloom, Bloomberg report asserting that the upgraded OLED model would yield higher profit margins. Uh, saying that it's incorrect. So even though it's three hundred fifty dollars com as uh, compared to the regular three hundred for the regular Switch and then two hundred for the Switch Lite, um, apparently whatever they they're putting in there, I guess it's just the OLED screen. Uh, they're not necessarily seeing a higher profit margin. Um, yeah, I I mean the Switch not Switch Pro, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the Steam Deck is a real thing. So if people want like more powerful hardware so it's not 4k but that option's out there now um i'm i'm kind of fine with with my current switch just the regular launch one uh, i didn't get red and blue i wish i did i got stuck with the regular black ones are uh, you lucky um yeah i don't know i'm fine with current nintendo hardware i i don't really crave a switch pro I mean, yeah, I I'm I'm good. I don't, like I never buy a Nintendo system for the stellar uh updated uh you know cutting edge technology because Nintendo never does that. Yeah. So you go in knowing what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. Like my my Switch is my portable indie machine and occasionally Skyward Sword or Ace Attorney, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe Monster Hunter every now and then. Like, I, I, I know what I got my Switch for, and I use it for that. And I don't need a Pro. I don't even need an OLED. You know, like, I'm, I'm good. I, I was even thinking to myself the other day because you know, I think I'm getting to the point of my, uh, to my life. Even though I'm eternally 19, and no factual birth certificate or anything can deny that. Um, <laughs> Or, you know, I'm, I'm starting to kind of want to, like, maybe save money up for a house or whatever. You know, it's the Bay Area, so fucking fat chance of that happening. Probably gonna have to move out <laughs> of uh, the Bay Area for that to happen. Or even yeah. just California in general. Um, but Go start like, a commune in Wyoming. Oh, hells yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just like, man, do I really need a freaking... Um, I almost said Switch Deck. A Steam Deck. <laughs> do I really need a Steam Deck? I'm just like, you know what? If I'm playing handheld, I'm probably I'm not 
going to be like, even if I get the Steam Deck, like I already have a monster PC, like anything lesser than that is already going to be a downgrade. So I'm just like, I don't know. I'm fine. Do I need to spend six hundred dollars on a on a Steam Deck? I don't know. I'm, I'm I'll probably wind up canceling it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm good. <laughs> what about you, Sarah? So I got the OLED switch, uh, because I'm a creature of chaos, and I was like, sure, why not? Couldn't get the white one though. It really kind of ticked me off. But uh, yeah, I strictly got it because I use my switch for traveling. I'm one of those people. I rarely touch my Switch unless I'm traveling. Uh, and I travel a lot. You know, I traveled a lot pre- pre-COVID. I'm traveling during COVID. I'm being safe, all that stuff. But, like, I have anxiety being on planes, so being on my Switch for hours kind of helps. And, like, I also got the OLED because for, like, my vision's terrible. Half of the games I play on Switch, I need to play, like, this close to my face because I can't see shit. And since the OLED's all about making things brighter and making the screen bigger, I partially only got it for that to, like, help myself, like, I don't know, play games better on the go, because that's always cool. And also, I need to see my wonderful Otome dating sim CGs in the best light possible, because my Switch is my Otome machine. Which was my joke about the Steam Steam thing, by the way. I said I would have just bought bought it to to, to play dating sims on it. Because, of course, I would. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I got the OLED. I'm actually kind of excited. Because Walmart keeps lowering the price, baby! It's now below $300! Because of Walmart's crazy price-matching feature, uh, it's gone down, like, 60 something dollars. <laughs> because people on the internet keep finding it cheaper, so Walmart keeps lowering the price on it. Nice. Oh, I totally oh. forgot. They did a <laughs> fucking... I don't know if you want to consider a remaster. <laughs> they, put, they put Luigi's Mansion 1... On the 3DS. So, to go back to an earlier story, if they're going to take away the eShop, say goodbye to Luigi's Mansion 1. I guess and 2 also, but... Yeah. Sorry. Oof. I Sorry for interrupt. No, I just... Yeah, I, yeah, I got the OLED, because I'm a creature of chaos. And I fought those crowds. I probably punched someone over the internet for it. <laughs> it was probably just like, give me that damn OLED so I can play pub, pub encounters on a bigger screen! As I, like, beat somebody over the head with my two switches. Yes, I have two switches. No one will buy Oh, that damn, you know what? One. I never played A Link Between Worlds. And it's 20 bucks. Same with Majora's Mask. <laughs> Are you just, like, going through the 3DS at, and eShop now? Yeah. Like, Sir, charging you more! <laughs> Wait, Actually, that means I, he's, he's, he's busy. I can discuss pub, pub encounters. <laughs> yeah, they, sneak it in. They're, they're twenty bucks right now. I mean, shit, keep might as well going. grab it. Keep, keep going. I can see all those sexy C- CGs in the brightest screen wait, possible. Wait, it's gonna be how, great. How do you see all your old purchases and stuff? See now, keep I talking got... to Abba, hurry, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now now you've got me look, wanting to look at. No, I, I'm not gonna open my 3ds and look at the eShop. I don't need to buy more <laughs> games that I'm never going to play. Especially Embrace since it. I started playing Final Fantasy fourteen, and now I don't play anything else. I mean, I can't say anything. I still play WoW every damn day of the week. <laughs> anyway, shit, where was and, I? And Rainbow out. Siege every night, so. <laughs> um, Something <laughs> about Nintendo and their... Uh, yeah, Nintendo's a weird company. You yeah. know, at least, at least Nintendo will allow dating sims. And I, then I am in a very happy place. Hey, if if Nintendo's down for uh, incest and Fire Emblem, they're down for dating sims. That that's that's far less risky for them. Uh, you do know that Pub Encounters was on the front page of the Nintendo eShop, and the first image that they showed was the old man love interest licking your leg. Correct. I am not depraved, so no, I did not know that. Go Nintendo, go! <laughs> you allow anything you want. Oh, shit. Nintendo, more like Sintendo. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> For the record, I did not romance the old man that, that licks your leg, because that shit's weird. I at least have my standards. Jesus it doesn't involve old men licking this my leg. This podcast has standards. <laughs> of some variety. My own yeah. personal standards. <laughs> Though I feel like all my standards went out the window when, you know, I became I became an Adler simp. I believe all my standards were, went out the window. That implies you ever had any. I did! I just lost them for a minute there, but it's okay. 
They're back. Oh shit. Um, you know, I think we actually have time for one more that we can that we can try to squeeze on in. Uh, let's see what's this time go. That is one fifty. Uh, the movie streaming giant Netflix has announced via a shareholder letter that it intends to expand its services into game streaming, uh, much in the vein of Stadia and xCloud. Uh, the initiative is set to roll out within the next year without any additional charges to customers. Although whether the change... Wait, what the fuck did I write here? Although whether that changes in the... F oh no, I, I, I wrote that totally right. Never mind. Let's do that again. Uh, <laughs> although whether that changes in the future remains to be seen. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, my response, this is basically the same thing. Uh, I don't care about game streaming right now because it's not quite there yet. I have pretty good internet. Some people have even better and they've been having an okay time, but just not for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I am old school in the sense that like, like I, I have been converted on the Netflix sort of uh things where like movies and TV shows I don't really buy them on Blu-ray or physical copies or anything anymore and I'm okay with like subscribing to streaming services and streaming whatever I games I want to buy and own like I feel like there's I I don't want to do like the streaming type thing for them like like a subscription service like I get Game Pass is, is is Game Pass I feel is sort of like a in between state where like you're you're not streaming them but they're like you could you download them and play them on your own system um but yeah like I I don't know like I, it's an, and it's not even like I have to have physical games I'm okay with like digital or physical games I just I don't Stadia was just like a big no for me. I'm not really big on XCloud and I'm not I'm I'm interested to see what Netflix brings to the table that you know we haven't seen yet that maybe they might mm -hmm. do something interesting with it, but I, don't know. I I think it's cool that it's just it's not going to be a price hike even though, you know, once it's big and a formal thing, I fully expect like whether the the base netflix pay is going to go up or it's going to be like an add-on or whatever that, that that seems fair to me but um like one thing that kind of excites me about it in particular even though i might not necessarily use it is that um netflix i mean netflix should be kind of hit and miss like don't watch their their version of death note don't watch their version of bleach those are bad live action anime adaptations but they know they are more than willing to like fund projects. So if there's like exclusive stuff on here. I think Netflix has a decent enough track record for funding projects uh, with really good potential. Look, look at fucking Castlevania. It's fucking amazing. It's and so yeah. uh, the Witcher it's series. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Witcher fucking slaps too. Yeah. So I, I, I have I have a level of interest in seeing uh, what they do on that front at least. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested. To, yeah, like if they do their own gaming thing, that'll be really interesting to see. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just interested to see what sort of technology they bring to the market because, like, Stadia, you know, was such a like a crash and burn sort of thing where they were like, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll let the ISP, uh, they, they'll figure everything out for like data caps and stuff. Like, you know, we're not going to worry about that and you know, spending 50 gigs downloading every game, you know, just to play it once. Uh, anyway. Um, shit, you know, they even kind of flirted with the idea a while ago. It was like years ago with uh, what was it? Black Mirror, the Bandersnatch. And there you go. And like, obviously, that that's not like a live action thing. That's just like, oh, make a choice within this window or whatever. But it, it was it was an experimentation for sure. I mean, um, it was about as much gameplay as a Quantum Dream game, so. Yeah, and without all the shitty people working on it and all the shitty writing and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Christ. We, 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 need, we need to have an episode dedicated to fucking talking about Quantum Dream games or something, just, just so we can no. let it all out. I don't have enough mental health strength for that. Yeah. I, I, will, it... I, I will die for... 
David Cage's sins. <laughs> I will discuss Indigo Prophecy and its weird alien cockroach creatures, but I refuse to discuss anything else. I have a lot of thoughts on Heavy Rain, and will I, I could probably make like a three-hour video essay on why Heavy Rain is a piece of shit. And, yeah. I also but, want to just like stand on one of those hills with like fires behind me holding up a pike and it has David Cage's head. But I, I, I will say one of the best things I just want to be happen. like all covered in like tatters and like bloody but just have David Cage's head <laughs> on we, we need that like, we need that like Jesus a like Christ. a heavy metal Holy album. Shit, dude. Like heavy metal album cover. Yes. That, you know, like just as drawing like spray paint that on the <laughs> side of a van, you know. Just me on bloody holding david cage's head on a spike perfect i, I don't know if i'm down for that you, 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 you go ahead you go ahead i won't go that far i hate him i hate him with the like fires of a thousand suns like i hate him i hate david cage I, his most punchable face in existence i i he's, he's a piece of shit that's for sure uh one of my favorite things about um what was the last game De detroit become human is that it showed that a lot of people are really fucking stupid. <laughs> um, so, so for anyone that don't know, it's, it's a very shallow fucking uh, allegory, whatever, for civil rights, uh, civil rights movement in America. And, of course, David Cage and I is like, oh, no, no, this has nothing to do with American history. This is, a, this is about fucking cyborg uh, robots uh, fighting for their own rights, whatever. And then there's fucking uh, libertarian, like, right-wing dipshits that are just like totally willing to just be like, you know what? Racism doesn't exist in America. It's 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 dead. It's illegal to be racist. Therefore, no one could possibly be racist. Like shit like that. And then they'll play Detroit. You're just like, wow, this message is so powerful. Look at these people who are like discriminated against. This really hits home. I'm just like, you stupid. <laughs> you fucking stupid motherfucker, dude. It's yeah. It's bad. I, I got a I got a very decent amount of cringe out of that. Cringe cringe is like one of those currencies where it's both awful, but it's also amazing. And yeah. I uh I think it was free on PS Plus one month, and so I have it downloaded on my PS4 because I wanted to like play through it once just so I could be mad about it <laughs> like it have, have, and like have like actual like you know, like context for why i'm mad instead of just being generally mad that it exists uh but yeah. i haven't got around to it yet and and like i can't make myself play it <laughs> i remember finding indigo prophecy as a kid and thinking it was the coolest damn thing ever and i finally was able to get a copy of it and i played it i remember like 14 year old me was like this game sucks <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I got like three hours in, and I just gave up. I never played it again. Okay, okay you know what? This is a dangerous proposition right here. Uh oh. Do I do I trust <laughs> Nintendo to eventually in the future do some kind of re-release of the original Luigi's Mansion, or do I buy it for forty bucks on the 3DS? Wait, but didn't they do a re-release of it? No. I th the, the, the re-release on the 3DS. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of then. Is that yeah. the, that that was the re-release? Yeah. And they didn't put it on. It just it doesn't make it fucking Nintendo. Why don't they make sense? That's that's been the show, friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy this stuff right now, but I'm very tempted to do so. I'm almost. I'm gonna that's boot up been Ocarina. The show. Thank you for watching. Hold your 3DS <laughs> is close tonight. I don't know. Where's your 3DS, sir? We have to hold the I don't have one up. anymore! Wait, you don't have one? No! I got Why? rid of my 3DS! I never played that damn thing! Here, Pokemon's on the it. Switch now! I don't need a DS! I don't think my microphone's gonna pick it up, but... I know. Maybe um, it is. There we go. Alright. There we go. Zelda. I don't have a DS, but I have a little Chris Bean! Anyway, I'm yes, that's been the show. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thank you, Atma. Thank you, Sarah, for having some laughs, talking about fuck. We talked about... We had so many fucking segues, and we didn't even have freaking Sylvie on. Is that Toe Jam or Earl? It's Earl. Okay, I, nice. always, I always get confused. Yeah. But, uh, man, we talked about a lot of weird shit. We talked about Terminator. 
We talked about we, we did no, zero. I want to rewatch Terminator Salvation. <laughs> Why Salvation? I don't know. I was yeah. compelled to rewatch T three at one point, so you know. You know. Uh, I'll tell you what. If people want to hop into the game session Discord, you can find the link <laughs> basically everywhere. Um, we, we should have some Terminator watch parties. <laughs> I, I think one and two are on Netflix right now, so might have to do that sooner than later. <laughs> I'd be down for that. But yep. Uh, thanks everyone for hanging out. Uh, yeah, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.